Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Algebra Unit 8.3 Notes, Day 2. Today we're talking about solving quadratic equations by factoring. Our learning target today is to be able to solve a quadratic equation by factoring. Now, before we do that, let's just kind of review something real quick. Up at the top, you can see I drew three uh, coordinate planes, real simple ones. I want to know... How many solutions does that first one have? Okay, the first one has two solutions. All right, that's important to know. Our next one has, and it can look like either one of these. How many solutions does that have? Okay, that has one solution. And finally, what about this graph right here? Either one of those. That one has no solutions. So just remember that when we're solving these, we can have problems that have two solutions, one solution, or no solution. OK. so. Today, we're going to solve by factoring. And just remember the rules that we've talked about. The quadratic term must be positive. OK? It has to be positive. Well, Mr. Grace, what's the quadratic term? So the quadratic term, if we're talking about the x squared, the ax squared, it needs to be positive, OK? And the other thing that has to happen is the quadratic equation must be written in standard form. Mr. Grice, what's standard form? Well, standard form would be the ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? And then when we're talking about the equal sign, we want it all on one side. It can be look like that. Or it can be switched around over there. It doesn't matter if the zero is on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Either one is fine with us, okay? But the key thing is that we have to get everything on the same side, okay? And then we do that, and then we can solve. So the quadratic term has to be positive. That ax squared has to be positive, and everything in standard form on the same side. Sound good? Okay. So the directions say solve by factoring and to write our answers on the uh, answers, we don't need to worry about that, are on the back of the page. If you're looking at the back, the answers for number two are wrong. Okay. So let's start with number one. Number one, we have 4x squared minus 25 equals 5x squared minus 10x. So. I need everything on the same side, and I need my quadratic term positive. So those are my two quadratic terms. Which one am I going to move and why? Well, it might be like, well, we learned to move everything to the left. So if I move everything to the left, we would have a negative x squared, and our quadratic term would be negative. We don't want that. Okay, so you have to look between the two to know which one you're moving. And in this case, we're going to have to move to the right. So I have to move everything to the right side. Okay, so the first thing we're going to move is the negative 4x squared. And then we get, have negative 25 equals... That is x squared minus 10x. And now I have to move that 25. So I'm going to add 25, add 25. And what does the 25 line up with? Nothing. There are no like terms. So we're left with x squared minus 10x plus 25. OK, so. It's great. We have the ax squared plus bx plus c. But guess what? We're not done. We haven't even factored it yet. We've got everything on the same side. 
but now we have to actually factor it, okay? And that's where we would do the look to see if there's a GCF. There's not, so then we would multiply 25, the factors of 25 are 1 and 25, 5 and 5. So out of those guys, which ones multiply to get to 25 and add to get to negative 10? Okay, you should get negative 5 and negative 5. And that works in both situations. Now, do I have to split the middle term or can I do the shortcut? I can do the shortcut here because our leading coefficient is 1. So we get x minus 5 and x minus 5. And this is where yesterday we talked about splitting them up into the two problems and setting them both equal to 0. Now. How many answers are we going to have here? <coughs> Excuse me. You're only going to have one answer because it's the same thing. And when you solve it, I'm not going to show the word because you guys should be able to do that by now. We get that x equals 5. And that's our final answer. Okay? All right. Let's move on to number 2. I'm going to draw the line down the middle, and remember the first thing we look at are our quadratic terms. Which one are we going to move? Hopefully you're saying the negative y squared, okay? So we're going to move everything to the right. So this is just a reminder for us, and to move that we have to add y squared, add y squared, Those cancel, and we have 31y equals 3y squared plus 4y. Okay, it's not 0 yet, so we have to keep going. We have to subtract the 31y, subtract the 31y, those cancel. We get 0 on the left side, which is great, that's what we want. And on the right side, we have 3y squared, and then 4 minus 31 is negative 27y. Okay, so what do we do? Well, it's a binomial. Okay, so a binomial, we look to see if there's a GCF. Is there a GCF? There is. We can divide a 3 into both of those, and we can also take out a y. So we have 0 equals 3y, and then we're left with y minus 9. Now, the next step would be to take these two and set them equal to 0. This is going to be, well, no, this won't be the last time I do this. But some of these guys, you're going to need to be able to do in your head. Like, I can solve both of these in my head. In the blue, we get 0. And in the pink, that ends up being a positive 9. Okay. All right. Number 3. Where's my quadratic term? Do we have another one? Nope. So for this one, I have to move everything to the left. And the only thing that we have to move is that 9m, which makes it a little easier. So I'm going to subtract 9m and subtract 9m. Those cancel on the right. So we have a 0. And there are no like terms, so all I'm going to do is put that in standard form. 2m squared minus 9m minus 18. Okay, you see how that worked out? Okay, 
Are there any like terms or like terms? Is there a GCF? Okay, no GCF, which means we have to multiply. We get 36. The factors of 36 are 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. So out of those ones, which ones multiply to get to negative 36 and add to get to negative 9? Okay, you should be saying the 3 and 12. And which one's negative? The 12 is because that 9 is negative. Can I do the shortcut here? Nope. We have to split the middle term. So 2m squared plus 3m minus 12m minus 18 equals 0. Okay. So draw the line down the middle. The GCF of the first group is m. And we're left with 2m plus 3. The, guys, this is all review. You should be solving this very quickly. Now, my leading coefficient is negative, so my GCF is negative. It's a negative 6. And we get 2m plus 3, which is perfect. Both of those match, so I did it right. We have 2m plus 3 and m minus 6. And do not forget about that equal zero part because we're solving guys we're solving we can't forget that all right remember that we have to set the 2m plus 3 equal to zero and the m minus 6 equal to zero okay So on the left side, we have to subtract the 3 first, and then we divide by 2. On the right side, all we have to do is add. So we get m equals 6. Let me make that look a little better. So our answers in numerical order would be negative 3 over 2 and positive 6. So for the blue, there's a shortcut to that. I'm going to be writing in with the big marker, so you don't really need to worry about that. Our final answer, that's a positive 3. That ended up being a negative 3, right? And then we, we had the 2 there, and we ended up dividing by 2. I want you to pay attention to that the next time that comes up, okay? All right. Number four, you guys are all on your own. Remember that we have to have a positive quadratic term. So I'll tell you the first thing that you need to do is you have to move everything to the right. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and do this one all on your own. Okay, and there's all the work. We had to split the middle term after we moved that 5w squared over and put it into standard form. And then if you notice what we were talking about in that last example where we said, oh, it's negative 4. Well, now it's positive 4. It's the opposite. And then it's divided by 5 because that's what our number was, our coefficient was in front of the variable. Okay. That's always going to be the case. All right. Let's try number five. All right. So which way are we going to move? Are we going to move to the right or are we going to move to the left? Well, let's look at our quadratic terms. 
for this one, we're going to need to move everything to the left, because if we subtract this, we would have a negative 2n squared, and we don't want that, okay? So we're going to subtract that 2n squared first. And guys, if you're really good at doing this and you want to subtract and do multiple things at the same time, you can do that. I'm not going to. Okay, next we would need to add the 5n to the other side. That cancels and we get 2n squared plus 10n equals negative 14. And the last thing to do would be to add that 14 to the other side. The 14 doesn't have anything to combine with. Yay, we got zero. Okay. So we got to keep going. First thing we do is we always check to see if there's a GCF and we can factor out a two. And then we're left with n squared plus five n plus seven equals zero. Sweet, so we might be able to do the shortcut here. Our leading coefficient is one. So the multiples of seven are one and seven. So what numbers multiply to get to seven and add to get to five? Wah, wah. Can't get done. Okay. So our answer is that this can't be factored or can't, I'm sorry, can't be solved by factoring because it can be solved just not with what we're doing now. It's what we're going to be doing next week. Okay. All right. If you want to do number six, you can do number six. The answers are on the bottom of the next page. Okay. So once again, we have to get the quadratic term on the same side. Which way are we going to move? Are we going to move things to the right or move it to the left? Well, for here, I want to move everything to the left. So I'm going to add that 4w squared to the other side. And since this one's a little smaller, I'm going to show you how we can do both of these on the same step. Okay, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do this. I just want to show those other people how it can be done. Okay, so we get zero on the right side, which is what we wanted. 12w squared plus 4w squared is 16w squared minus 81 because our three w's cancel. Okay, now it's a quadratic binomial. The first thing we always do is check to see if there's a GCF. And there's not. Okay, so it is subtraction, and I can square root both of these to get my two binomials. 16w squared, uh, the square root of that, I'm sorry, is 4w. Remember, one turns to a plus and the other turns to a minus, and then the square root of 81 is 9. Okay, so we would set both of those up and set them equal to zero. And just by remembering our shortcut that we just talked about, my final answer, I would take the opposite of my nine and then I would divide it by four. And what do you know? It happens to both of them. The opposite of negative nine is positive nine and divide that by four. So our final answer there we go okay now if you guys need any extra help or some of this was confusing you got to come in for help guys you got to all right uh, once again if you want to try eight or the challenge problem the answers are there I'm not going to go over them in this video though okay this is 
Mr. Grice, signing off for Algebra Unit 8.3 Notes, Day 2. Thanks for watching.